Vikings made a couple of roster moves today that we will get to as this video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Jaron Hall got waived today, and it could be for potentially one of two reasons. The first being, it could be the leg injury that he suffered against the Philadelphia Eagles in the preseason finale last Saturday. All that's been reported is that he had a leg injury. There's been no further details provided since that. So we don't know the severity of it. The second reason that KOC actually provided, quote, that move, letting go of Jaron Hall, was really indicative of knowing what we went through last year and having the opportunity to have a couple of veteran guys behind Sam with comfort in the system. When I first saw this, I <laughs> was at my son's dental appointment, so I couldn't let out the emotion that I wanted to so I kept it inside which was a maniacal laugh to the likes of Walter White and Breaking Bad trying to gather up as much cash as possible because his life his family's life was in danger so he tried to get as much cash as possible in the crawl space under his home and the money wasn't there and he looked at Skylar and said where did all the money go to which she replied I gave it to Ted and this man had a mental breakdown and just let out one of the more iconic psychotic laughs in TV show history, in my humble opinion. But once I snapped back to reality, I said, okay, I, I can't do this anymore. I let out all that energy of being mad at not keeping a at least a some not promising might be a strong word, but at least something that I think is worth keeping. I let out all that energy of being mad during the Sean Mannion versus Kyle Sloter saga. As in, you have a quarterback that had a really nice preseason, but the team convinced or did their best to convince the public that the very good preseason that we saw from that quarterback was make-believe. It wasn't real. It never happened. He's awful. In fact, if we were forced to plug and play this player that you guys are going all rah-rah about, if the quarterback or quarterbacks ahead of that player were to go down, we are royally screwed. But the guy that they chose... Instead, they could never explain what exactly he does better than the more talented player that they let go in football terms. Outside of, he brings veteran leadership and experience. I guess it's all-encompassing. You remember the receivers documentary on Netflix? And during the Jefferson part, one of the Jefferson parts early on, they reshow the highlights of the Eagles game Eagles versus Vikings and the Vikings they turned the ball over four times that game one of them being Justin Jefferson losing the ball hitting the pylon touchback Philadelphia and we got the audio clip or actually video clip outside of the locker room the door was closed but we got the audio from that in which KOC let out a, a passionate speech saying, mother effer, gosh darn it, you can't turn the mother bleeping football over. That's not what we're about. That's not what who we are as the Minnesota Vikings. Take care of the bleeping football. And I was like, hell yeah, that's what I want to hear, coach. We do need to take care of the football. <laughs> Nick Mullins. For his career with 34 touchdowns and 39 turnovers last year with the Minnesota Vikings, seven scores and 10 turnovers. After seeing it firsthand on the sidelines, after giving that speech about taking care of the football, knowing that's a big issue that you need to overcome this year in 2024. You looked at Nick Mullins and said, oh, my God, we have to have him back. That's it's, it's a, it was a, that's an oxymoron. No? But Jaron Hall is not QB3 worthy. 
I can accept that. We need to do better. If Sam Darnold goes down and the GOAT himself, Nick Mullins, go down, who are we going to turn to? Someone with veteran leadership and experience. Which is why the Vikings signed Brett Rippon, far and away the superior player to Jaron Hall, which actually, the more that I think about it, Brett Rippon reminds me of a poor man's Nick Mullins, who for his career has four touchdowns and 12 total turnovers. Got to take care of the football, damn it. You MFers better get it together. But the veteran leadership and the experience, oh, what do I do? What do you want from me, man? I, I don't have it. I don't, I, don't, I don't have the energy in me anymore to get mad about stuff like this. Now I just use it as, all right, I'm just going to match ridiculousness with ridiculousness. Nothing's wrong just as long as you know that Nick Mullins will throw picks, fumble. Every chance he gets, he's going to stumble. I know you're wondering when you're the only one who knows that. Another move was made today. And before we get to that, Sign up for BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Get a 125% bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. The bet that I like that I'm going to have to figure out a parlay or something before the season starts. But a bet that I do like. Give me Jonathan Grenard over eight and a half sacks this season. This really comes down to if he's healthy or not for the entire year. Last year for the Houston Texans was the first time that he's played over 13 games in his career. 15 games played for the Texans in 2023, got 12 and a half sacks. The previous three years before that played in a combined 33 games. And the most sacks he got in that time frame was in 2021 when he played 12 games and got eight sacks. So as long as he stays healthy, the numbers tell you, at least the way that it's been trending, that over eight and a half sacks, that's one that you can feel good about. The other move that was made today, which actually this, this, this doesn't constitute as an official move, but something that is to come according to the Vikings GM. Reacting to the cuts to get to the initial 53 man roster. I said, "Hey, there's a bit of a concern here at running back because after cutting Kane and Wangwu and Miles Gaskin, you only have two running backs on this roster and in cutting Kane, you also lost your kick returner. What are you going to do there?" Well, they brought back Miles Gaskin on the practice squad and Quasi Adafo Mensa said that Gaskin is going to be the RB3 and kick returner for week one. So that's a huge sigh of relief for me that it's been addressed. And speaking of Kane and Wangwu, he was cut by the Vikings, picked up by the Saints, and then waived by the Saints due to a failed physical. So clearly there he's dealing with some sort of injury that the Vikings think is not worth investing in. And if Miles Gaskin can be at least a decent kick returner, I mean, I like this a lot. Because we know, as far as running between the tackles as a running back, Kane, if he gets out on the edge, sure. But the total package from what you want from a running back, Miles Gaskin is clearly the better player. Again, shout out to BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. We'll see you next time.